What is something Americans have which Europeans don't have? Florida man. Europe has Polish man and Russian man. I went to a Russian grocery store in Miami, which means there must be a population of Russian people. Beware the Russian Florida man. A hybrid creature capable of levels of F very heretofore unimaginable. Europus, the English tourist on holiday in Ibiza. Outlets with 110 volts, 120, 121 whatever, me, this works on regular 110 V power, others, you mean 120, me, it's essentially the same, others, what about 125, me, dude, relax, it'll take anything from 100, 130 V just fine. Refrigerators the size of my flat. Every European who has seen my moderately sized refrigerator. This explains why. When my Czech friends came to visit, they stood around my fridge taking pictures of each other with it like it was a monument. Can confirm. As a Czech, who spent some time in Chicago, the fridge and stove size was something I would expect a family of 10 with nearest shop far away would have here. Not in small apartment for two people. Bro wait till they see my dad's deep frizz full of mostly venison sprinkled with hot pockets. Yes, the real American dream. I have a pretty basic no frills, non high end frigidia refrigerator, and have had several visitors from Europe who visit me ask if they could see my fridge, and could look inside it. Just came back from Europe, and wondered how they fit anything inside those tiny things. Garbage disposal units are installed beneath the kitchen sink. That's so weird to me cause I always got, told as a kid, to not put food down the sink. Meanwhile Americans are like, if I don't eat it, the drain can have it. My aunt got one of those sinks with a garbage disposal unit a few years ago. We are from a small country in Europe. A few months after she got it, it got all clogged up and smelly and disgusting and she couldn't find a plumber who had ever had any sort of experience fixing those sinks and they all refused to touch them with a 10 foot pole. So she got completely fed up with it and bought a much cheaper, simpler one. That's how uncommon they are here. No we are taught that as well. Just because it could, doesn't mean it should. You should always clear your plate before washing. As a Canadian I thought this was a universal western middle class feature of the kitchen. I'd never seen one, before moving to the US, from Australia. I'd also lived in Asia and Scandinavia. Visited family in both northern and southern Europe. My only exposure to the concept prior to that was when one tries to eat Homer in The Simpsons. As a result I'm always moderately terrified of it. I'm Canadian and I've actually never seen it. Northern Ontario. Our currency has both for the one dollar. Makes it easier to tip strippers. I have no idea how Europeans tip strippers with euro coins. Make it hell. I've only been to German strip clubs, but the norm there was to trade in your real money at the bar for fake 1 euro bills. You swipe the card between their cheeks, obviously. Beholder Stephen Fry is completely overwhelmed by a standard American college football game. The two photics celebrating the Jets overhead at the end is my favorite part of that clip. Stephen Fry is correct, that video is a perfect encapsulation of the American spirit. Fry's face after that flyover is priceless. His expression just screams is this real life, and that's not even the largest football stadium in the US. I'm an avid soccer fan, and don't really follow American football. Years ago I was just bored I then looked up biggest stadiums in the world I was surprised most of them are college football teams. Not only that most of them were built back in the 1920s and 1930s, when the population was like half of what it is today. Preposterous. Incredibly laughable. Ridiculous. Charming. Expensive, overpopulated, wonderful, American. Bless you Stephen Fry, you international treasure. Wait, this is just a game between two schools. College, university in British. Football is a massive deal over here. Most of the largest stadiums in the nation are for college football, not the professionals. To be fair, this is one of the largest games in the season between two long-standing rivals that absolutely hate each other. War Eagle. Welcome to Southeast Conference Football. It's two universities in Alabama. If the terminology is unclear to non-American people, I went to Auburn for a year. That game was like the Super Bowl. People spent hours getting costumes ready. The entire town shuts down the day of the game. All school buildings are locked, and all police in town are on duty, and working at the stadium. 
in case any Americans are wondering college, university, sport is a spectator event is literally not a thing in any meaningful sense in the UK, with the exception of a single rowing race once a year, unis have sports teams for sure, but crowds will be minimal and TV coverage non-existent, the spectacle in that Stephen Fry clip is beyond what you would see at a regular match between two leading football, soccer, clubs in the Premier League, having been to the Cambridge Oxford boat race though, it was ridiculously fun, probably more akin to the Kentucky Derby than say Auburn v Alabama, but I loved it, just imagine, posh Londoners dressed up in top hats and coattails, future PhDs and laureates, a few foreign students, like myself, and then random Londoners all getting ridiculously shmammered on Pim's cups, to watch a bunch of nerds race each other on rowboats for 5 minutes down the Thames. One of my favorite memories of my semester in London, that I don't really remember either. Seriously, you ever visit the US, and get a chance, to go to one do so, it's an experience. As a Brit I was in Atlanta, when it was the first game of the college season, it was Georgia State vs Alabama. Although I'm no expert I gathered they were two of the bigger college teams. They were also playing at the brand new Atlanta Falcon Stadium. At the same time, it was also Dragon Con. Honestly, the city was absolutely packed. And crazy with people in fancy dress, stilt walkers, Batmobile, thousands of college students in letterman jackets and chillider outfits. It was late summer and a beautiful sweltering day. I had no plans. And unfortunately the game was sold out. But I just parked myself on a balcony of a bar, happy hour, ordered drinks and just soaked it all in for the whole afternoon. It was incredible. The largest living organism on the planet. I give a slack report to my entire company, 800 plus employees. Every morning about the state of the company, I'm a business intelligence engineer. At the end of most days I insert a fun fact. This is going to be the greatest fun fact ever. Thanks for sharing. Every morning. Seems like a lot. Nah mate, that's your mum. I always find myself finding everything cheaper in America online stores than in European stores. Especially with hardware, woodworking, light machinery. That's interesting. As an American cyclist I find the best prices for bike parts come from the UK. At home or somewhere else. They have screens on their windows. Do other countries not have screens on their windows? I've been to Hungary and Germany, but it was winter so can't say I noticed the windows. Depends on the climate and location. When my husband lived in France he said they never got bugs or mosquitoes and always had the windows open. I'm assuming the cooler climate or maybe bugs just aren't that common there, because we still have screens in northern states. Down here in Texas you're asking for an infestation and living hell, if you leave windows open without screens, because of the hot humid climate bugs love, blew my mind to find out that there are places, where they are just not necessary, still amazes me, the state bird of Michigan is the mosquito and the upper peninsula is blessed with swarms of trophies many years, I've not been myself, but others have told me, that it can rival Alaska's bush skeeter crop, which is pretty legendary, though I'm not sure I believe that, stupid question, is this like a mesh screen thing, so that you can open the window, but bugs and stuff can't get in? Yes, Canadians have it too. It's a screen that's barely noticeable. If you're standing like 6 feet away, it's not going to stop any tiny bugs, like little nuts or fruit flies, but does a decent job at stopping any bug big enough to make a buzzing sound. I worked for a US firm. I'm from the UK. There are many differences, but the one that used to cause so many problems was the term Fortnite not commonly used in that part of the US. So they use B Weekly for the same thing, except in the UK that means twice a week. In the US B Weekly can mean twice a week or every other week. Same with biannual. It's stupid. Biennial means every two years. Biannual means twice a year. People just get it wrong a lot. As a middle or east. European who was in the US 16 years ago. Amazing sweets selection. Please send Twizzlers to Slovakia. There's a subreddit that exchanges snacks between countries. Can't remember the name, but I'm sure you can find it. Oh, I will look into that. Thanks. We have a high drinking age at 21. We Belgians drink our first legal beer at 16. Start going to parties. Graduate high school. Start college. Explore the student life. Graduate college, 
celebrate graduation with a trip to the US, and explore the nightlife there, only to be bared from bars, because we are too young to drink. Europe is definitely more laid back, I've been to manufacturing plants in Germany, where beer is sold out of vending machines. First time I went to Belgium I asked a bartender about Jupola, because the signs are everywhere. He said something like only kids drink that. As an American, I found that statement hilarious, BTW. I'm totally jealous that you can buy Westmall off the grocery store shelves. Good Mexican food. I always like to say that the worst meal I ever had in my entire life was a Mexican place in Slovakia. Slovak Mexican food sounds like a word taken from Urban Dictionary. My dad got tacos in Australia. They contained raisins. That's so sad BC decent Mexican food is pretty easy to make. Over here in Germany I finally decided that I make the best Mexican food. I've tried a few Mexican restaurants, but they just can't get it right. After reading all of the comments here I've come to a conclusion that I better get out of my village of 500 and seek out new and exciting Mexican food adventures. Thanks for the tips. Oh god I'm Mexican American and went to university in Wales for a time. Got a bit homesick a few months in and someone said they would take me to get fagitus. I figured that's just grilled meat how could it go wrong? Well apparently there the fagitus are in a sauce and eating almost like a stew. My flatmates all thought it was delicious. It was not. In the UK, there is a Mexican chain called Oaxaca. It's spelled that way because those Brits are unable to pronounce Oaxaca. I was thinking about if I started a Mexican restaurant in the UK. College sports. This one I'll give you. Universities play each other in sports, but nowhere to the scale in America. For football, soccer, most players can be in clubs academies from the age of 5 6, finish school at 16, and then just go straight into reserve slash first team squads. Whereas in America they play sports in school, university, then get picked up by clubs. We don't have air conditioning in Northern Europe, which is a requirement in America, according to what I've heard. Do keep in mind that Vancouver is at a lower latitude than Amsterdam and Florida is near the same latitude as the Sahara. Of course the Gulf Stream impacts stuff a lot but in general, we are quite high up. Gulf Stream changes alert. New York is on the same latitude as Barcelona and it's definitely colder in New York. Bigger portion slash sizes. As an example I think a small or regular PB jar is probably considered large in European countries. Kind of but I think that is changing. When I was in Germany a few weeks ago everywhere we went out to eat at. The portions were something I would expect to get in America and pretty large. Germany is known for its large portions. For other cheap. Hop over to the Netherlands and the portions are smaller. Bigger homes and wider streets. Automatic ice dispensers in your fridges. It's such an American thing you only find it on fridges. That are labeled American style. I'm gonna start calling fridges without ice dispensers. European style. Also I love that someone called garbage disposals an angry sink and I will continue to use this term. Hummingbirds. Ack. Been back a fourth a lot. Ack. Ack tends to do that. Try DC next time. That's exactly how my mind was processing their comment. The 14th of December 21. Me. Space. I love spending time in Europe, but man, it is amazing to come home and have hundreds of thousands of square miles of just open country to explore, hike, ride, camp, etc. A lot of it isn't even in national or state parks, which are also amazing, yeah. I remember driving a Greyhound in Central USA and just be astounded at the nothingness of endless space. It was actually a nice experience. My wife emigrated from Europe, and when I explained that the closest major town in any direction was a 4 hour drive she was blown away. She regularly comments that going for a 3 to 4 hour drive is just a day trip here, but in Europe is apparently a pretty big trip and much older co-worker was describing his wife's family visiting from England back in the 1960s. They picked them up at the airport, and then drove back to where he lived. He said they were getting twitchy in the back seat, and he finally realized that they were not used to sitting for this long a drive. It was a 3 hour drive to the small town they lived in. 3 hours of highway speed would be all the way across England. Right. On the flip side. That's one thing I love about Europe, you can jump on a train, and be in a totally different country and culture in an hour or two. Pretty fun. Most Americans have circumcised cocks, 
live in the UK with a US wife. When my sons were around 2 and 4 we were visiting my wife's grandparents in Arizona. With the heat it was virtually impossible to keep the boys in clothes. They would just strip as soon as you put clothes on them. Understandable since as is like living on the sun. Wife's grandfather asked why they weren't circumcised and my reply of we are not Jewish. Why would they be? Led to me finding out it's the norm in the US. There's the story about how one German commander wanted to separate out the Jewish prisoners of war captured during the Battle of the Bulge. The American Catholic chaplain said they refused to tell them who was. The commandant said no problem. We'll just order everyone to drop their pants. The Catholic priest says and you'll find that everyone is circumcised, including me. Well that's an awkward conversation with the in-laws lol. A million choices in the cereal aisle aisle. Oops. Thanks. Also, F. Kellogg's. High fructose corn syrup. Cheaper gas. Cheap V8 cars and trucks. Land is cheaper. I don't think most of us Americans understand how cheap gas truly is. Petrol in France is currently $8 per US gallon. 1 euro and 86 cents slash L. The most sunshine hours per year. Thanks to Arizona, Nevada, Texas, Cali. Legal right turn on red. I don't always agree with Jeremy Clarkson, but in this instance he's correct that it's one of the US's greatest contributions to society. Germany, or at least East Germany has this. If I remember correctly it isn't slash wasn't a thing in West Germany, and after reunification they started phasing them out in East Germany, but people got really pissed off, so they gave up, and kept them. As a Canadian these comments just sound like Canada. We really are like an American light, as they say. Sure, Canada is a country, but it's not a foreign country. Every time I'm in Canada I feel like I'm in a store brand US. Pancakes with maple syrup. Date German. And she is super confused why there is so much sugar in the American breakfast. Go to the UK. And there is none point go to Amsterdam where pancakes are practically the national specialty, and they are mostly savory. If you drive east from the California coast up some of the higher passes all the way to the eastern boundary of CA, you pass through truly immense diversity of natural landscape, beach, estuary slash marsh, green rolling hills, golden plains, volcanic table mountains, foothills, national forests, wooded alpine, high alpine, desert plateau, 5 hours of driving one way, worth it every time. Just found this out on another post, our own graves. Apparently graves are often dug up, and reused in Europe and Australia. They're owned by the government, and will not always be yours. The only reason, why we don't do the same is, because we are a younger country and we haven't run out of room, to bury people yet. I get that in Europe, but Australia is freaking huge. Surely they have enough room for graves. Bruh that's kangaroo territory. Even the dead dare not go there. The Grand Canyon. It is so huge. That looks fake. Not even kidding. It's truly so big that. If someone doesn't put it into perspective for you your brain just interprets everything as regular size. I needed someone to point to the opposite rim. And explain that it was 2 miles away. And point to what I thought were shrubs. And explain that they were actually 20 to 30 foot pines. And that little glint of light. That's the Colorado River. When I got to the bottom. A 10 mile hike. I had trouble contextualizing everything with that I had seen from above. This is a good one. One of the most amazing things I've visited. Finally a good one. That shiz bonkers. Hot pockets and pizza rolls. Drive in everything. Drive in Starbucks. I've had drive in banks. That's so crazy to me. The heart attack grill. That place gets credit for saving my life. It's down on Freeman Street, and they have, had, it's been a while, a big scale out front, like to wear a pallet. I clambered up there certain that I still, was under the 350 pounds eat for free gimmick, big neon scale, Freeman Street, people everywhere, and this scale clocks me in at 408, tried to tell myself it was busted, a gimmick, whatever, but it broke me, I had never weighed that much, and I had a moment of crap, I'm not healthy at all. These days I clock in right around 275, still hefty, but I probably won't die before I'm 40 now, still have never set foot in the place, probably never will. Ranch, like why is it so good, why don't we have it, and can we please exchange Boris Johnston for a bottle, he's be good in your circus, 
If you can access mayonnaise, sour cream, Worcestershire sauce, and a few basic spices, homemade ranch is infinitely better than bottled. Ice in my soda. A more ecologically diverse country, we have virtually every climate and ecosystem on the gradient. We have every type of bear. If you don't believe me go to a gay bar.